Hi, Risky Bitness here. So, you know, I'm playing this game, Resonance of Fate slash End of Eternity 4K HD Remaster. And, you know, I didn't really feel like making a whole video out of it, but I felt like it deserved at least some kind of uh, review here. So I'm doing just like a little bit of a quick and dirty review. And basically the long and short on this game is it's unique. It's different. There's a lot going on here that um, your typical JRPG doesn't necessarily have going on. And it's cool. Um, it's fun at first. But the problem that I'm having with it now as I get kind of deeper into the game is that it's just kind of getting really tedious. I feel like I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again. So for all the novelty that the battle system has and the whole, like, you know, guns instead of swords sort of a thing and the setting being sort of in a, a world that is on a clock, more or less, um, I find I'm just kind of getting bored with it the more I get in, the deeper I get into the game. Now, the other problem that I'm having with this game is that the storyline doesn't really happen. Uh, there's a story, but it seems to be... It's really difficult to explain. You might have to try and experience it for yourself, just so you can get a feel and an idea for what I'm talking about here. But it just really feels kind of a whole heck of a lot like the story is an afterthought. Uh, and there really isn't much of one, if that makes sense. I'm halfway through the game. I, I take a look to see how long the game is and how many chapters there are. I'm halfway through, and they're really just kind of starting to tell the story, which I find to be incredibly bizarre. I'm not really sure what to make of that. And even though the story is now kind of just being told for the first time for almost 40 hours into the game, I still don't really get it, and it doesn't really make a whole heck of a lot of sense. Now, I'm playing this game on Steam. Uh, you know, PC is my preferred platform these days. And that's just my own personal preference. Of course, if you have a different preference, that's totally fine. Uh, you know, I'll make the jokes and the memes about being on PC and playing games on PC and PCMR and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, what you enjoy and what makes the most sense for you is the platform that you should be playing on. Now, with that having been said, for this game, it just sort of feels like... There's not that much meat on the bone once you get past a certain point. Uh, but with this game, there is a high-resolution texture pack that is optional. So if you do get this game on Steam, make sure that you get that high-resolution texture pack, because the game doesn't tell you that you need that in order to really enjoy the, the uh, remastered graphics, but you do. If you don't have the 4K texture pack, you're not going to really get the benefit of the remastered graphics, and you're going to just feel like you're playing a PS3 game. There is uh, English voice acting available, but the Japanese voice acting is just worlds better. So I decided to go with that. And I mean, really, there's just not that much more to say about this game. It's, it's, it's Honestly, it's just, there's... I feel like there might be better games that you could play. Um, I have been enjoying it, and I'm this far into it for the uniqueness of the experience. You know what, I can definitely say this. There are some battles that you're going to get into later in the game that do require a lot more strategy, but it almost feels like they come out of left field, because after that point in the game, you're used to kind of doing what I'm doing now, just kind of over and over again. So then when you have to actually do a battle that requires a little bit more thought, it just sort of feels inorganic and wrong. Like, why do I suddenly have to think about what I'm doing? Um, you know, although, for what it's worth, the battles are somewhat tactical. You know, for the most part, there is importance to where you position your characters, um, when you choose to attack with the heroic attack that I'm doing now, and uh, there are some different special effects and things that you can get. So there is a little bit more depth to it. It's just that you don't get to utilize it most of the time. What is really nice about this game that gives it, again, a unique feel is that there are... The world map is basically built on a grid, and the grid has all these hexes that you have to unlock in order to move around on the world map. And there's a number of ways that you can unlock them, and how you choose to unlock them in what order can have a tremendous impact on the buffs and special abilities that you get when you're on that part of the world map. Uh, and that actually does expand to dungeons. Now, dungeons in this game are largely just gauntlets, and you kind of run from one room to the next, defeating all the enemies, and by the time you reach the end, of course, you've, you've defeated the dungeon and moved the story to the next area. 
Uh, there also are optional missions you can do, which of course I do with all of them because I'm a completionist like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mostly enjoy those. Um, it does start to get kind of weird toward about the midpoint of the game where I'm at now because I'm finding more and more that those optional missions take a much longer time to complete. So it's almost like they take more time to finish than the main game. And I think if you just went through the storyline and just did only the storyline missions without doing any of the side content, the game would probably be like maybe half as long. I think I'm looking at probably about 60 to 70 hours at this point of gameplay if I continue doing all the optional stuff, which I do fully intend to do. Now really quickly here, like I said, this is kind of a quick and dirty review, so I don't want to get too deep into the, uh, the granular details of the game, but one thing that is pretty nifty about this game is that there's only a handful of weapons, and uh, it's not really mandatory to buy a new weapon. You can actually continue upgrading the weapons that you have by customizing them with more parts. Like, you get different grips and different scopes, and uh, you can make the charge up time faster, you can make the damage higher. So there's actually a lot you can do just by upgrading your weapons in that regard. So that's kind of fun, although, for the most part, it's not really something you have to think that much about. You just put the part that has the highest number on your gun and try to get as many parts on your gun as you can and you get the benefit. So again, it's kind of mindless. It's very, you know, keep in keeping with the JRPG sort of idea that, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter <laughs> what you do as long as you just do it. <laughs> and I think anyone who's played JRPGs long enough kind of understands what I mean by that. They're not really very highly strategic. It's more of a just get the biggest number and you'll win sort of a deal. And I feel like there's really not that much more to the game to talk about apart from those things. Uh, the world building is cool. It's certainly unique. You're in a world that is uh, basically a clock. And the entire world is a tower that is built on the idea of a clock. And there's sort of some kind of divinity involved in the, the zenith, as they call it. And uh, the gears on the clock. Uh, everyone seems to have their soul is like a... Jewel, I, I don't know. Like I said, again, the story doesn't make a lot of sense at one point, but what they're going for here is kind of cool. So, in conclusion, it feels a lot like this game is maybe a whole bunch of cool ideas that were executed rather poorly. I think that's the best way I could describe this game. A whole lot of really cool ideas that were executed rather poorly. And that's all I've got here for today on Resonance of Fate End of Eternity 4K HD Remaster. If you like JRPGs and you want to experience something that is a little bit different, and of course has customizable wardrobe, then I would say give it a shot. If you're expecting a really good story, you will be very disappointed here. Uh, if you're expecting something very challenging, you may be disappointed here, depending on your perspective. And if you're looking for something where the choices and decisions you make in the game matter, this game is not going to fulfill that for you. But if you're looking for an experience that is just a little bit different from what you may be accustomed to, then yeah, I think this game will probably give you a little bit to chew on. I'm going to go ahead and try and finish this one, and then I think after this one, move on to something with a little bit more meat on the bone. Uh, I think my next game that I have kind of in my queue is the uh, the Nier uh, Reincarnation game, or the Nier, what's it called? I don't know, the Nier game, the one that they remastered recently. Not, not, not Automata, because I already played that and I loved it, it was one of the best things I've ever experienced in my life, but the other Nier game. So I'm looking forward to that, that's going to be a great, great experience, and I'll probably do like a quick and dirty on that as well. And I think I'm going to make this a regular feature on the channel, just these sort of quick and dirty reviews where I'm talking off the cuff, I'm playing the game, I'm chatting. And, um, you know, if that's something you enjoy, let me know in the comments below. Say, hey, I like the quick and dirty. If you don't like it, let me know in the comments below, and maybe I'll do, you know, fewer of those. But since my content generally has a uh, pretty low viewership, <laughs> I think anything I do different is probably a good idea to try. So, anyway, that's all I got for today. Thank you very much for watching Risky Fitness. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment, all those things that you do. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, you know, share it with the groups that you're in and pass it along and help me out, help me grow the channel because as it is right now, I need all the help I can get. Thank you and have a pleasant tomorrow.